Hello again, and welcome back to the What Is That video series. I would imagine that most of you watching this video are probably sitting behind a keyboard of some kind or another. Whether it's a physical keyboard or digitally part of your cell phone or tablet, keyboards have become a really important part of how we communicate with the digital world. It's our input device. But of course, keyboards don't come from the digital world. They come from an analog world, typewriters. A mechanical method of producing text is nothing new. Uh, the first designs came out in the 16th century in Italy, but the most successful designs came about in the late 19th century. As businesses grew larger and larger and business correspondence became more important, a means to produce text quickly, mechanically, was needed. This week's artifact is one step along that journey, so let's have a look at it now. This week's artifact is a Blickensdurfer Model 5 typewriter. It was developed by American inventor George Blickensdurfer in the late 1880s and patented in 1891. It was intended to compete with the larger models produced by companies like Remington and Hammond. The Blickensdurfer models were the first truly portable machines, which was quite handy, as many typewriters of the day weighed up to 20 kilograms. They also cost quite a lot less than the competition. A new Blickensdurfer, like this, was about $35 at the beginning of the 20th century whereas typewriters from the competition were around $100. One of the interesting things about this machine is that it does not have the standard layout of keys that we are now familiar with. There were quite a variety of designs of typewriters, and not all of them even used a flat keyboard. One particularly successful model, shown here, was developed by Reverend Rasmus Malling Hansen in 1865, and was popular in offices until the first decade of the 20th century. The German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche is known to have used one from 1882 onwards. Like the Hansen writing ball, the Blickensdurfer typewriters had a keyboard that differs from today. George Blickensdurfer made a careful study of the English language and determined that the letters A, D, E, H, I, N, O, R, S, and T were used in about 85% of all English words. He placed those letters on the lowest row so that the typist would be limited in how much they needed to move their hands. The middle row contained letters that were in approximately 24% of words, and the top row contained the remainder that were used in about 6% of words. Lickensdurfer hoped that other companies would adopt his scientific keyboard layout, but they didn't. The QWERTY keyboard layout that we're all familiar with today was first used on the Scholes and Glidden typewriter in 1874 and was laid out entirely for mechanical reasons. The inventor used that pattern so that the machine would not jam when the keys next to each other were used quickly. Of course, that makes no difference today with a computer keyboard. Blickensdurfer typewriters were also different in that it used a type of wheel so it would not jam in the same way that other typewriters might with their hinged keys. Sadly, we don't know much about this particular typewriter, as it came into the collection in 1973, along with a very large number of other undocumented items. It would be very interesting to know the letters, the ideas, and thoughts that the original owner typed up on this machine. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.